Greetings everyone, the good Sonites here, and welcome to our 2020 loadout video. So, looking at the stuff we got for the beginning of the year of 2020, video I wanted to do a lot earlier, but we were waiting on a package, and I was sick as all hell. Twice. And that's before this whole Chinese coronavirus outbreak that's going on out there, so... Great start. Great start all around. So... That being said, let's get started. So review, see overall loadout. Well, we still got our Cry G3s we've had for several years now. They're comfy, they're spacious, they're Ranger Green, and that's about everything. So first off, immediate future purchase. Our plan is to start moving over more towards M81 Woodlands, aka God's Plaid. So that's on the docket of things we're going to be doing here in the near future. So hopefully we won't be one green snot bubble forever. I do like green, I do like green, don't get me wrong, but right now we are a massive, or basically snot. That's what we look like. Tell me I'm wrong. This is the same color I was hacking up in my sink earlier this month, so BAM! Got him! Alright, so what's up next? Well, let's get started on the basics. Well, we start with the uh, belt line. Well, well, your second line, I guess, but belt line is... A lot of essential gear goes on the belt line, for all intents and purposes. So we got our Ronin Tactics um, was a task force inner belt right here. This is all velcro. It's nice. It's comfy. It's soft. I enjoy it very very much and From a combination of being sick and a bunch of exercise immediately after we've lost some weight So let's see how this belt fits Of course we're looking at the Ronin Tactics. We got the small one here. So that's Tech Kaiwi's uh, Dump pouch that my buddy Mythic knows the name of and I can never remember it. It looks generic, but it's actually really good our uh, Coyote Tactical Solutions Burrito, in case you're feeling a little peckish on the way. And of course you got just a Fireland mid-ride with your uh, generic concealment holster, but in the uh, organ defense, little thumb modification to make everything just a wee bit more accessible. So, I need to make the belt a bit tighter. Things to do in the future. Oh, that's all over the place. Hold on. Ah uh, yes, the negotiator. So, we got our belt line going, the inner belt, matching the inner belt out to the, up with the outer belt's always a pain, but hey, we are set. So, you can see, got our two immediate handgun mags ready to go, our rifle mag facing backwards, and ready to go at a moment's notice. Dump pouch, just gotta throw that open and we're ready to, well, dump things. Eye pack ready on the back, small the back, full of medical supplies so we don't die, and a handgun in case our man goes down or runs dry or something catastrophic happens, you can draw that real quick. So, yay, simple belt line. Simple yet effective. I've seen a lot of people have very similar setups, at least on the mags and handgun, and well, I guess the eye pack too, same burrito. Main thing I see differentiating is some people don't like dump pouches, and that's cool. You don't have to have a dump pouch, it's kind of an optional thing. I like mine though, because at the end of the day, I gotta pick up magazines and extra stuff. People lose things all the time, you dump them in there, take them up to the uh, field marsh and be like, yo, someone's really gonna want this $35 mag back, so. Be a, good, be a nice person. Be excellent to each other, ultimately. So, what is next on the docket? Well, let's move over to Plate Carrier. Watcha! So, Plate Carrier-wise, we still have a Cry SPC. But we've been slowly making some improvements. Now this is one of the big ones, for me anyway. Because we've actually added in a radio pouch. It's got the slit the slot so you can fit in the uh, parts here. Doo, doo, doo. One day this will be easy. Slide those up in there, make sure it's not too tight. By taking a nice deep breath, everything should feel Comfy. Yes, all right, cool. So what do we got going on? Well, we got our PTT because we actually can carry a radio now. So that's set up right here next to this tab. We got a radio in here, simple bell fang. I got cables all over the place, but with the flick of a thumb, we can get our comms on. So that's pretty neat. We can actually just dump that out of the way so I can get my thumb in there easy. Yeah, there we go. Easy access. That's all locked down. We added, and this is nostalgic as all hell for me, we've got an interceptor uh, dick guard, cod piece, a um, uh, body armor, modular tactical vest, groin protector, outer shell. 
And what that does is it gives us our uh, battle loin. Our battle loin guard. Battle loin cloth. So if we're wearing nothing but a pair of silkies under all this, silkies play carry no shirt, just going completely ham out there, we got the mohawk, we're set. If we get shot in the junk, we're okay. <laughs> so always a good thing to have, it's nostalgic because I was actually issued an interceptor back in 2009. And uh, the fact that I can mount this onto something as advanced and modern as a Cry Structural Plate Carrier, SPC, is pretty gosh darn fantastic. So, I also got a little lanyard, a little uh, S-bind here so I can keep my gloves on there too, so they're low and out of the way. So, pretty neato. Off on the right side, we still got slick here. We don't have anything important to put here just yet, but we do have a nice little opening for breathability. We added in some rear plate pouches. They're just kind of like hanging out there. I got them set on the upper set up here so they don't bump into the mags and they give us just that little bit of extra protection if we ever get side plates. I might just find some uh, soft armor inserts and stuff and just throw those in there for a little bit of extra protection. Alternatively, they're right now more or less entirely superfluous. Well, they do help with heat build up, so it's going to be even hotter than it needs to be in this island. I might just take them out, but for right now, they're there. They're nice to have. And yeah, that's well, everything left and right side. The back is still relatively slick, so we can throw on a pack. And our pack of choice is still the Tag Combat Sustainment Pack. As we got three extra mags, batteries and extra stuff here, extra ammo and gas, and um, a carabine, uh, carabine or personal retention lanyard and some other stuff in here. And you know, some goodies, some snacks, and most importantly, three liters of water. So this pack alone weighs close to 10 pounds. And uh, weight adds up quick, so this thing is far from the most comfortable to wear around for extended periods of time, but it does ah, enhance our overall capability, particularly in the sense of combat sustainment. We're just going to let that hang free there for a second, and it's trying to ride up my plate carrier and kill me. Ooh, you a little choked out there, that's kind of hot. Anyway, moving on, we've also got our key placard here. so. We go ahead and install that, slowly but surely, that goes in there, and bam, we got gear, we got a heavy pack of hydration so that we don't perish in the wasteland. Now that's going to sit at its weird little angle, these things always fit weird on these tinier plate carriers, but it's comfy enough. And I think the water's still good, let's find out. Yep, that uh, tastes like Flint, Michigan right there. Good stuff. Then we can just tuck that in here. Bam, out of the way. Nice and cozy. So we got all of our stuff. Our little recon setup's getting heavy pretty gosh darn fast. Whew, yeah, um, I wouldn't want to hike around in this for any extended period of time, but that's also kind of what it's for, so... <laughs> Yay! So moving on, we've got two lids we're working with. There's the, uh, ah! I really gotta strap this. I need to get the new, uh, more twin needle straps. So this is a quick release system. This thing likes to jostle around a lot on its own. Ugh. But yeah, we got our little, um, what is it? Maritime Operations little Ops Corps replica helmet. Which is of the 40 pads. This thing is comfortable as all hell to wear. But unfortunately, it's still just a replica, so I wouldn't be relying on it all that much other than to carry some nods from time to time, because it's basically more of a uh, lower tier bump helmet until we can get an actual SF Super High Cut. So, what is our go-to helmet of choice? I gotta take this back off, it's gonna drive me insane, it's gonna be rattling around. It's mostly the BBs. If I filled it with more intellectual stuff, this wouldn't be as bad. But I mostly want the, ah, twin needle pack straps that have been out of stock for like three months now. So I get those quick release buckles so I can take this off quick, fast, and in a hurry. Because that's the first thing I want to dump if anything goes horrendously wrong. So, helmet of choice for the meantime is still going to be a Cry airframe, but now with an M81 cover. And this one has been spray painted this greenish gray color, which makes it far, far sexier, in my opinion.
And we still got our nice nods, our uh, mount there, so we can put some sexy nods on there, run some night vision, although mostly we're going to be running our uh, GoPro Hero 7 Silver off that boy. So on the inside we've got the um, the Epic Air Team Windy Pads without the comfort pads because we're minimizing headspace because there's not a lot of headspace to begin with. We still got another, whatchamacallit, oh why is the name eluding me right now? The uh, cam fit, we got a cam fit going on so we got nice retention and yeah so we got a nice little helmet going on here throw on the ear pro, we take our cable out of here, cable plugs in right here actually let me go ahead and do that for you guys so you take this cable here you want to lock these to your ear, I'm going to leave them open just so I can hear without having to turn them on jam this thing in here like so and boom congratulations we now have comms what are you doing? come on man thought we were better than this uh, difficulty between um, piece and operators. So we still, still pull our mags. Mags are ready to go and now we have comm access so we can be broadcasting to our homies and having a good time. So that is pretty Gucci. God that's nostalgic. Old school. I love it. So as you can see our crotch guard is out of the way and protecting our belt. It is occasionally whacking us in the nuts but it's not that heavy to begin with and it will keep us safe from the ground so cool stuff now as far as protection goes we still have our ESS clear goggles we have a few options here so these ones generally gonna like hang out out here on top of your head throw that over there throw that one over there and bam our eyes are now safe we look like a huge nerd but a nerd with eyesight, so that's cool. We also got the dark tinted one if we want to change it up if it's like super bright for whatever reason. And of course, we've got our GIMP mask, our uh, safety mask here. Where's that Velcro? Bam and bam. And congratulations, we now have a very weird setup. But our face is protected. Ah, oh my god. Now it's a self, adjust the way the helmet sits. This one sits way too low. But we've got our stuff going on. We can hear, we can see, we got our camera going. I've got a ball of cotton in my mouth. Just perpetually there. Oh, it tastes terrible. Alright, so. Come on, stop being a massive... Okay, now it's under my nose. So it feels like a little... Uh, German imported mustache. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything else, but um, yeah, so we're comfy there for the most part. Oh my god, we're not comfy. <coughs> I'm dying. This is it. So, with that added protection and our ear guards there, we've got our go to pew pew stick, our Mark 18, Toki Marui, and we've got an Elkan. So, neat little setup going on for a nice little recon Elkan. I think it's a pain to get shouldered. And yeah, we got our throw switch, 4X, 1X. And we can all just have a good time, so. Wow, that's uncomfortable. Uh, plan number one. Elkan is cool and all, but I think I'd prefer an EOTech. Preferably one of the uh, green ones, so. That's what we're looking at, although we could just rudimentary pew pew side it, point shooting and whatnot. And of course, we still got our left sided shooting going on. In case I need to do any of that. Yeah, the sling is just everywhere, my god. Alright, so ultimately the mask, um, I hate it. But it's there and it works, so throw that off. So one of the other big improvements we got going on that we can get going with everything. Ah! Literally getting out. See what I mean? I, mean, I uh, what should I call it? Ugh! Charlie Chaplin mustache going on there. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's kind of cool. We got all that stuff going on. But what's more important, even very, very much so more important. I'm gonna pop that off real quick. You go ahead, we're gonna remove our Gucci headgear. But this is the important part, and I cannot stress that enough, is we have an M50 gas mask. We are shy 
one filter. But we have an M50 gas mask, which means this thing is going to be impervious to BBs. So there's no reason not to run it for an aerosol game, other than the fact that it's going to fog up like it's cool. Oh, that's not good. All right, now we're going to die, everyone. I dropped one of my filters. Oh, it's letting air in. Oh, unfiltered air. Ah, no. Not like this. That's one way to die. Okay, there we go. So now we're actually breathing through the filter. And we got our cool little gas mask on. We need another filter, guys. I know there's more filters out there. I need to find one. Because breathing through only one filter is far more apparent. Well, that's a nostalgic smell. So I was actually one of the first units back in 2009 on Camp Hansen to get issued one of these. So, yeah. Nostalgia meets nostalgia. So... That's interesting, this thing's easy enough to breathe in, I can talk into it, it's way nicer than the old Millennium gas mask, but still a pain, and I'll probably wear this to go running out in town, because uh, hazing yourself is good for morale. Now this thing's way sexier than the other stuff, let me grab uh, our little helmet here, I've been wanting to test this out, so my voice already sounds way cooler, except for those long Darth Vader pauses where we throw this helmet on, and oh yeah, boom, kacha. We're going to have to loosen the chin strap by a considerable mar margin. Oh, Lord, he coming. Oh, Lord, he coming. Ah! Okay, so you know what? The helmet's not getting clipped right now, but as you can see, we do have full successful um, integration going on, and uh, also we're immune to CS gas now, so that's pretty cool. And, uh, I guess we're ready for a trip to Wuhan, or, you know, basically anywhere, because the coronavirus cannot be stopped. Um, I need a lot more filters, <laughs> if this is going to be okay, so, uh, there's that, that's cool. I need another filter. Alright, I think I've emphasized it enough, so we can take our helmet off, and we're going to take this off. Oh, real air. Okay, so, ooh, that thing's a lot lighter than I remember. It's probably because it's only got one filter. So, that is the party kit. I'll probably end up also getting a uh, i5 dye gas mask, or a paintball mask, because it's basically integrating the goggles into the faceplate, which will make my life way easier and also better protect my uh, comms. So, it's an idea. It's not a bad one either. We got a decent setup. Um, without the bag on, this is pretty doable. I'll probably take the bag with me as a uh, quick run over here, drop that off, and we got a decent setup going. So, what else do we have? So there's a few other things. We'll obviously still got a Glock 19. It's kind of a standard thing. Additionally, off of my boy Juice Box, we're going to be picking up his uh, super short CQV uh, M4. Here, this is a garbage replica vertical grip which is why it's wobbly as all hell, and at some point I will get another good one that does not suck. This one's actually AEG battery powered, so this is going to be more of your standard airsoft operator higher capacity magazine, so we can really mag dump on people without having to constantly count every 30 rounds. Also, with these weighing practically nothing, we'll exponentially reduce the overall load on our body, and we can actually probably just swap this out into a chest rig, and this could be our fun little recon setup, so... Oh boy! And last, but most certainly not least, we have our big boy, the uh, Classic Army Stoner LMG, our 10-pound machine gun with iron sights, because everyone likes iron sights. It's non-negotiable. You gotta like iron sights, or you're uh, cut from the team, kid. But yeah, it's comfy enough. The stock is more or less fixed because it's trash. Um, the rear sight is fixed because uh, the pop-up sight... I. I not my cup of tea. And yeah, you can do cool stuff. The feeding hose has been removed because it, cr it uh, crinks real easily and I want to keep it in good shape from we're going to do pew pew stuff. And ultimately everything in there looks pretty much okay. So as you can see, we got a fun little LMG for when we want to kind of slow down, take a step back, provide support fire. There are DMRs and snipper riffles we could use, but 
I mean, why not just run the LMG? We're shooting this in close quarters, but now I could put horrifying amounts of, what, a thousand rounds of fire on someone? Because, uh... They're wearing a different color armband than me. And <laughs> that's how uh, life works. So, that's pretty much everything I have for you guys and everything we're going to be doing later this year. So, pending upgrades, second filter for the gas mask, um, side plates, uh, some type of EOTech, because EOTech is a fantastic company who doesn't pay me to say that in any way, shape, or form, although if they wanted to, I would not be opposed. And yeah, again, second gas mask filter, so the big ones, and some type of a I-5 gas, I-5 uh, paintball mask. Running the gas mask would be fantastic, but I guarantee you it's going to be all kinds of foggy, and the paintball mask will have better breathability and visibility, so. That is everything. I got so hopefully we'll get a game in here in the new future I'm supposed to play with the weepy lamb but plans got cancelled as they usually do due to being a father and that's just kind of a fatherly life so cheers everyone stay chivalrous and with any luck in the near future preferably early February I will see you on the field so stay classy and uh, never forget what you're fighting for team cheers oh man I guess if you're a dog person too. I'm more of a dog person, but there are things I support. Cheers!